Hey guys, uh, super sorry I didn't end up posting last week. You know, 4th of July kind of had me frazzled. I had a video planned, and then that fell through. So I went to my backup, and then that fell through. So I decided as a sort of apology, I am going to make a video that some of you guys have been requesting. So as of right now, we're going to do yet another Accelerators build. And no, before any guys ask, like this guy at the baseline video, I don't have money to make every single car that I teach you how to build. Apparently, I had to make a disclaimer for that. So there you go. <laughs> So, welcome or welcome back to the Dream Ride series. A series where you tell me which cars from fiction you want me to build. Now, if you have any cars you want me to build, let me know down in the comments below. And if there's a car that you guys want me to build right now, go check out my Patreon down below. When more people sign up, I'm gonna leave this series mostly up to you guys. Also, thank you to my first two patrons. Uh, they're right here. Uh, they make this worthwhile. Now I'm getting paid like two bucks a video. Also with the Patreon, there are other goodies down there that you can sign up for, like ad-free content, voting rights, and updates that nobody else anywhere on the internet is going to get. So, uh, you don't have to, obviously, just I'd encourage you to check it out, because guys gotta eat. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, it helps me out a bunch. Alright, let's get into it. Alright, for this week we are going to be doing one of my favorite cars in the series. A car that looks so much like a real life vehicle that I'm surprised Hot Wheels didn't get copyrighted. That's right, we are doing none other than Taro Kitano's Riveted. As usual, I'm going to split the video up into three sections. The first being body mods, the second being interior, and the last being the ultimate build. Also a little disclaimer, I am going by the concept art and movie version. The toy version is a little bit different, it's got four headlights instead of two, and you know, it's just easier to do the one that you guys all know and love, so there we go. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start off by putting down some knowledge of this puppy. Riveted is a yellowish orange hot rodder driven by the king of one-liners himself, Taro Katano. I'm gonna pass you. Amateurs. I think they're fools. Some people just can't drive in traffic. Welcome to downtown Coolsville. Population? Us. With roughly 815 horsepower at the wheels, this car is a muscle monster through and through. Now, as many guys are probably expecting, the base car for this build is a Mach 1 1969 Ford Mustang Fastback. Now, the reason why I specify Mach 1 is because this upper trim version of the Mustang comes with a few little extras on it that match riveted perfectly, including the side vents, the front bumper, and more. Now, if you can't get your hands on a Fastback, uh, don't worry, they're rare cars nowadays, but it's also a very iconic dream car, which means it has prompted many companies to create total body conversion kits for the regular 69 hardtop to look more like its iconic sibling. Oh, hardtop. I'm sorry your siblings are all better than you. I know exactly why that feels. My sisters are studying nutrition and physical therapy. Meanwhile, I'm making Hot Wheel videos on the internet. Isn't that great? Oh man, my parents are so proud of me. Now, these conversions are quite the opposite of cheap. In fact, their price sits between $6,000 and $7,000 for the complete kit. And it's not counting for labor, so really you're looking at more of at least $10,000 to do the complete switchover. And that's not even making it look like riveted, that's just to make it look like a Fastback Mustang. Alright, let's get into the build. A 69 Fastback is going to cost you roughly $45,000. Now, this sounds expensive, but keep in mind this already looks almost exactly like riveted. We're just going to need to add a few body mods here and there and we'll have it all put together. Now, there are two stark differences between the Fastback and Riveted. One is that big beefy engine. Two is that rear end. Now, before we begin, we're just gonna take a, a little breath and apologize to the car gods for the horrible thing that we're doing to this poor iconic muscle car. Cause I'm not gonna lie guys, this is gonna hurt to do a little bit. <laughs> I really like Mustangs. Dear car gods, I ask only for forgiveness of what I'm about to do to this poor Mustang. I'm aware of the sin I'm committing by tearing apart this car that did so much, not only for horsepower, but for American pride in general. Know that our reasons are noble, for our steel chariot is meant to be driven instead of rotting away in a garage. With this- <laughs> I can't stop laughing. With this build, we solemnly swear to make the Mustang proud. In gasoline we trust. All right, let's give it sacrilege. Now, first things first, we're gonna need to handle that massive motor. Now, much like what we did with Hollowback, hint, hint, go look at the video I posted. We're gonna 3D print this top part and insert it into the current hood. Bonus points if you make it fit in such a way that you don't damage the original bonnet. This 3D printing will cost you roughly $2,000 as this engine has a lot more going for it compared to torch motor. Now, as I said in the other video, uh, please be careful how you mount this thing. You don't want the engine flying off once you hit highway speeds. Also in the front, you'll notice that there are more lights on the front bumper. 
Now, here you're going to have to cut some holes to make it work. I decided that motorcycle headlights will do perfectly in this instance. For the ones on the outside, I decided to go with the 6 inch spiral headlight from Cafe Racer, which goes for roughly $40 a piece. For the ones in the center, I decided to go with the Banggood 7 inch motorcycle headlights for roughly $30 a piece. Now let's move on to the back end. That's what she said. Now, the hardest part of the back end is going to be the rear tail lights, which means this will all need to be custom work. Now, while I can't give you the cost of labor, I can tell you what parts you're going to need and what steps will need to be taken. The first thing you're going to do is take an angle grinder and cut out the entire section right here. You're also going to need to remove the lights completely, but do not cut the wires as we'll be using those later. You're then going to need to take a piece of sheet metal and cut it so it has the exact dimensions of the part you just cut out. Remember guys, measure twice, cut once. This is not something you want to mess around with. The only difference between these two parts are going to be that instead of cutting three slits for the original lights, you're going to be cutting four circles to fit Riveted's rear end. But do not, I repeat, do not cut these holes until you have the tail lights so you can measure properly. The tail lights I found were some United Pacific 1937 Ford tail lights for around $52 a piece. You're going to then need to wire these into the old lights, install them onto the sheet metal, and then weld the metal into place. And just like that, voila, you buy. You got Taro's tail lights. That's a tongue twister. Taro's tail lights. Taro's tail lights. The next step is to find a spoiler that will fit Riveted's design. Sure, one could argue that the stock Mach 1 spoiler could work, but I believe that we can actually do a little better than that. I found that a 2005 Dodge Ram is roughly 71 inches wide at the top of the bed. I also found that a 69 Mustang happens to be the exact same width. What I recommend is buying a Dodge Ram Duraflex wing for $120 and bolting it onto the back. It's not perfect, but I think it's the best choice for one that doesn't want to fabricate their own parts. The final step to making the back end is rerouting those back exhausts. Right where the license plate is supposed to be, you're going to cut two holes in the bumper and get a shop to make the tips exit through here, which most likely will cost roughly $200. Now, the final actual body mod that, you know, it's kind of weird to me, personally it's not my taste, but might look pretty cool, is the glorious T-top. Now, believe it or not, converting a car to a T-top is not as uncommon as you would think. In fact, without even trying too hard, I was able to find a forum post back in 2005 that stated a T-top conversion should cost roughly $400. Now, adjusting for inflation, this price then jumps up to $523, which is overall not horrible for some custom bodywork. Now, the difficult part is out of the way, we have the paint job and the wheels. Like Hollaback, I'm going to go with the Kragar 61Cs for the rims, one set in 20 inches and the other set in 22s, all at roughly $350 a piece. And since this paint job isn't quite as difficult as Hollaback, I'd say that in total the paint job is going to cost you about $2,000. Alright, let's, uh, let's do the math on this puppy. Now, for a near perfect riveted exterior build going off of a 1969 Mach 1 Mustang Fastback, you can expect to spend roughly oh, $51,591. Now, uh, that's, a, that's expensive, I'm not going to lie. But keep in mind that this build actually looks very, very close to the Riveted that we all know and love. You know, unlike Baseline or uh, Hollowback, there's no compromises that are going to be made. It looks super, super similar. I, could def I can definitely see this car becoming someone's 10-year dream project. Because, you know, most people can't pay $50 in a year. $50,000? $50, my idiot. All right, but as usual, we are not going to stop there. Buckle up because we got more to do right after this commercial. Thank you, by the way, for watching that commercial and definitely not skipping it. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to eat. Now we're going to start with a dash with an excessive amount of buttons and knobs. You're going to have to take out the original dash completely and create your own rectangular metal dash to fit. Now, if you're good with welding, this won't be difficult at all since you will only have to measure out the width, buy some self-tapping screws, and you'll be set. Now, since not everyone has access to a welding kit, you may have to take it to a machine shop to put it together. Now, that said, as long as the measurements are ready, it shouldn't be a problem to get the parts you need cut and fit together. Expect to spend roughly $300 to $400. First things first, you are going to need two gauges, one that measures speed and one that measures your RPM. Now, obviously, depending on where you live, this can be either kilometers per hour, freedom units, but you know, it's up to you. Now, I found a kit that comes with six gauges. They're black and have a red backlight, so I believe they will be perfect for what we're trying to do. Obviously, you only need two for Taro's build, but I would highly recommend finding a place to put the rest as they all give you vital information about the health of your car. It doesn't have to be on the dash, but you know, have it somewhere. This kit will cost you $185, and a little elbow grease installing them, but you know, overall, it's not too difficult. Now, for a little fun part for myself, I noticed that on Taro's car, there are like a billion switches. Actually, eight, but you know, it's close enough. I rounded up a little bit. Since there are so many switches, we don't know what all of them do, and some of the ones that we do know are doing impossible stuff. So, for a little fun and a little break and actually searching for the parts that I need, I am going to try to give all these switches meaning. 
this will not be included in the final cost of the build, as these are all optional and have no basis in the movie. Now the one button that does have to do with the movie and will be included in the cost of the build is the Nitrox button. This is the button that's put into the left of the speedometer. A Nitrous kit will cost you roughly $400 to $500. The button itself will cost you around $5. Now, let's uh, let's get into that giant switch in the middle. In the movies, this switch is hooked up to the lava plow. Since we have no feasible way of creating that, I decided to hook this up to a line lock system, which locks the front brakes and enables the driver to do a burnout like no other. Uh, funnily enough, I actually got myself a line lock system, which, uh, if all goes well, I will be posting about it next week. I'm, I'm gonna be using the same button Taro has too, so I swear I didn't know this before I made the video. So, uh, yeah, now you guys know what's probably gonna be next week's video. It's gonna be a ton of fun, you guys gotta check it out. A line lock will cost you roughly $130, and the switch will cost you 5 bucks. Now, for all those buttons at the bottom, which is a total of 8 switches, most of which aren't used in the movies. Before we start, the switches themselves are going to be about $2 a piece. You can probably find them for cheaper, to be perfectly honest. Switch 1, I decided, will be for electrical cutouts in the exhaust. For those of you that don't know, electrical cutouts are placed right before the mufflers in an exhaust system. A flick of the switch opens up the exhaust system and enables your vehicle to make more noise when you want it to and less noise when it needs to. Like say, when you're driving by your neighbors at night. I probably should have gotten this on my car, I'm so sorry neighbors. <laughs> on a dual pipe system like this, you can expect to spend $60 a pipe. For switch 2, I decided this will turn on the air conditioning unit. Unfortunately, that'll be non-adjustable, there's no place in the build that shows an air conditioner, so I hope you guys like the cold. This will be almost free of charge, as all it's going to do is require you to rewire some minor buttons. For Switch 3, I decided to make this control the radiator fan. See, in older muscle cars like the Mustang, the radiator fan was spun directly by the engine's crankshaft. This was extremely inefficient, as it sapped 5 to 10 horsepower from the motor and spun in time with the engine, meaning it would spin slower when the car was at idle, where a high-speed fan is needed the most. Switching from a mechanical fan to an electric fan gives you slightly more power and improves cooling for your engine, giving your car a slightly longer life. A brand new fan will cost you around 110 but you can cut this price by a lot if you go to a junkyard and pull a fan out of a more recent truck. Just remember to always leave that switch in the on position, because if you forget, you will lock up your engine. So be very, very careful with that. <laughs> on switch 4, I decided to make this the designated kill switch. A kill switch cuts off power to your engine when you leave it parked, and if someone tries to steal your vehicle, it's another step for them to turn on the engine. Now, usually you want to hide the switch, but if it's paired up with 8 other unlabeled... Uh, switches, it'll be almost impossible to guess which one it is. All you have to do is do a little bit of wiring work and you are gold. Switch 5. So Switch 5, I chose to make it control the bag suspension. Now, I know you may be wondering, why bags? This car is not a low rider. Well, in general, Riveted is kind of a low car. Low cars are great for track racing, but what do you do when you want to drive home when there are massive potholes and speed bumps? Bags enable you to control your suspension height and protect your car's undercarriage. This whole upgrade will cost you about $1,000. All right, Switch 6 was kind of difficult because I'm starting to run out of ideas. Eventually, I decided to hook it up to the high beams, which luckily is as easy as moving around a couple wires. So pretty much free. For Switch 7, I decided to make this one the on button for the radio. I would attach the radio underneath the dash on some motors so that with the flick of Switch 7, the radio will flip out from hiding for you to use. With all this extra workaround stuff, expect to spend roughly $300. And finally, Switch 8. Now, I was stuck wondering what I wanted to put for Switch 8 when suddenly it hit me. I'm going to attach a custom car horn underneath the hood. This won't just be any car horn though, no, 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 it's gonna be better. One flick of the switch, one flick of the switch, and you will get none other than Taro Katano himself yelling, I'm gonna pass you at 120 decibels. Oh my gosh, can you imagine sitting in traffic and just hearing, I'm gonna pass you at... <laughs> All right, now that I'm done messing with buttons, it's time to think about the rest of the interior. We're gonna need four things. A roll cage, a steering wheel, a shift knob, and some seats. A roll cage is gonna put you down roughly $2,500. The steering wheel wasn't too difficult to find, believe it or not. I was able to find a 10-inch wide steering wheel for $111. I was also able to find a custom dragon shift knob for $70. While well, the colors don't match, you can easily fix that with spray paint. And finally, the seats. We got really lucky with these, because Taro is not a very high maintenance man. I settled on the Procar 80-1605-61L racing seats at $192 a seat. Now for the full cost of the interior, including Nitrox, we are going to find that it costs roughly $4,071. Let's face it, this is uh, <laughs> going to be an expensive car. <laughs> Alright, and now my personal favorite part of this build, which I am so pumped for. That's right, we are talking about the motor. Now this is not going to be an easy task, as 800 horsepower is neither easy or cheap. On top of that, the wiki is very specific about the motor, so there's not many liberties we can take. 
we know it's got to be 815 horsepower. We also know that the motor is a 427 big block, which rules out any stroker kits or boring the cylinders. We also know that it's fuel injected, so it'll have to be either a modified carbureted vehicle or a brand new LS engine. With the stock 427, we can expect its output to be around 400 horsepower. Now, that's a lot of horsepower already, it's only half of what we need. In order to build this engine right, we're going to need to build it from the ground up. Keep in mind, I will not be including labor cost for this engine build, as it's very different depending on where you go. 800 horsepower is a lot of horsepower, which means the stock internals and block will not hold up to the test, especially not if the engine's over 50 years old. So we are going to have to invest in a brand new block, which will cost around $3,000 by itself if you go with a Dart SHP Ford small block. Ford's internals are going to be another $3,000 expense. These are expensive, yes, but these parts are preventing your engine from coming apart at the seams. Please, if you're building an 815 horsepower engine, please do not skip these parts. Next up is going to be the upper half. So for the heads, I decided I'm going to go with CNC ported high port 240 aluminum heads at roughly $900 a piece. And for the intake manifold, I'm going to go with the Trick Flow Specialties intake manifold kit for around $500. As for the camshaft, you're likely going to need a custom grind, which will cost you anywhere between $400 and $500. Now, before we put this all on, you need to realize that these parts will only get us into the brink of about 607 horsepower short. So we're still about 200 to 100 horsepower short. So what does any self-respecting car guy do when he needs to, you know, get a lot of power? That's right, we're going to be either turbocharging or supercharging this son of a gun. Honestly, uh, it really comes down to each one because both make around the same amount of power. Uh, a turbo is definitely easier to fit in your engine bay. <laughs> You're going to need a blow through carburetor though, so... Uh, I don't know. The cost is very different. I'm going to leave this up to you guys. I'm going to put the average cost at around 2500 bucks. But you need to remember, you're running both a Charger and Nitrous. And with all these high performance parts, your engine is going to be running a pretty high compression ratio. If you add Nitrous to the mix, there's a good chance you're going to blow your motor. So what do we do to avoid this? We're going to add some spacers between the heads and the cylinders. This allows you to have a little less compression at the cost of, say, 50 or so horsepower. But don't worry, because that horsepower is going to be more than made up for once you press the button. Also, if you want to know more about nitrous, I made a video going very into detail. You can check it out right here. You know, I know how excitable about nitrous everyone is. Me too. I, I'm thinking of getting one from up Skylark, so let me know in the comments below if I should get nitrous. Now, with all this put together, we are most likely going to be running around 815 horsepower, give or take 50 ponies. And with a proper horsepower, you could add a 200 horsepower boost to that 800 horsepower making a 1,000 horsepower vehicle. I'm getting excited. In all ways of the word. I may not be making 300 miles per hour, but probably gonna be in the 210 mile per hour mark, which is more than fat, which is way faster than anything you guys need to be driving. <laughs> all right, now for the moment you have all been waiting for, we are gonna put all the costs together right now. For the body only cost, you are looking at $51,591. For exterior and interior, you can expect to spend $55,662. And for the ultimate Tarakatano I am gonna pass you build, you're looking at roughly $66,462. Try passing that surf rat. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys giving me the time of day. I make videos like this every week, so if you enjoyed what you're seeing, uh, go check out my channel. Maybe subscribe. That helps me a lot. It makes me feel validation. I like validation. Uh, as I said before, you can try donating my Patreon. You don't have to, obviously, but, you know, really help a brother out. Plus, there's some goodies you can get, so that's another incentive. <laughs> I try to answer all the comments, and if I don't answer yours, please be patient, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you want to talk to me and the rest of the subscribers personally, I have a Discord also posted down in the description below. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day. Peace.